Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to dive into an important topic for all those looking to buy a new home, choosing the right neighborhood for your family. That's right. So um, choosing the right neighborhood goes beyond you know, the four walls of your house. It's finding a community that aligns with your family's lifestyle and values. So let's, let's kind of dive right into it. So the first step is to make a list of your family's priorities. So, so what are the things that matter the most to you? Like for me, I would say um, a sense of like, I, I have a, I have five and three year old girls. And my biggest thing was we like to go on walks, right? So I wanted to have an area where it was safe and they could, you know, I could teach them how to ride bikes in the area that I live in and I didn't have to go to a park to do it, right? That was kind of like one of my biggest things. So consider like the factors, I would say consider proximity to schools. Like I was mentioning about my, my kids, like the like parks, recreational facilities. Uh, think about you know your commute time to work. Obviously, that's changed a little bit with um, COVID. So some people are, you know, part-time remote, full-time remote. Um, so consider those shopping centers, access to public transportation. I would say that those are all big factors. Mm -hmm. And something that was important to me is safety, which I, I assume is important to a lot of people. So just make sure that you're researching, you know, you can research the crime rates in the area, look for neighborhoods with a strong sense of security. You can do that just by simply just driving through the neighborhoods before you put an offer in on the house. Or... Yeah. I mean, public records also gives you that guy, gives you guys that information. Um, so always do your due diligence on that aspect uh, to make sure um, that you feel comfortable and confident in your, your purchase for um, your home. So once you have your priorities set, now it's time to sit with us, do a consultation and, and come up with some, you know, do your own online research as well. Check out real estate websites, community forums, um, I mean, even social media groups, like nowadays with social media, every city has like uh, a platform where they talk about what's happening in the area, what's going on, they give you information. So I would look into those, join those groups and just to see what other people are talking about. That, that would be my advice um, for you. It's a great point. There's even, I mean, if you just look up the, the individual subdivisions, you just simply just put that into Facebook, a forum will pop up where it's a group with that sub. So, and then you can just check out what that sub's all about. Yeah. So, because online research, it can provide valuable insights, you know, but nothing beats actually visiting the neighborhood in person. Yeah, I mean, that's what you said earlier, right? I mean, drive around, drive around in the morning, drive around at night, see what's going on. I mean, those are all things that, um, you should do multiple times. Um, so it, it just gives you, um, it just gives you a real feel of like the atmosphere. And what I always tell people, like, I know it sounds cliche, but like when you walk into your home, it's going to feel like home. And the same goes for, I would say the neighborhood, right? If you're driving around the neighborhood, you're with your family and it just feels peaceful, and, and nice, I mean, you're going to have some sense of like internal feeling that this is a place where I want to raise my family. Um, so that's just maintaining that overall vibe and, and feeling that, it, it's all intrinsic at that time, in my opinion. If you happen to see people walking down the street, don't hesitate to strike up a conversation with the locals. Yeah. They'll provide first-hand experiences and, and recommend recommendations that you won't find online. For sure. And then another important aspect is the school district. So just research the local schools, their performance ratings, you know, are they a good fit for your children's, you know, certain educational needs. And there, there's plenty of websites you can look up, like the, the grade ratings that they give the schools, which don't put too much thought behind those, but you know, you 
like visiting the neighborhood. You can go check out the schools. You can talk to teachers. You can talk to principals. And I mean, I would say call, call them. Right. Yeah. I mean, do your due diligence. It's always like just figure it out for yourselves um, because that's essentially it's a long we always talk about long term right it's a long term investment in in your family so just make sure you do the homework up front and another important factor to consider when you're looking at schools is to make sure that the athletics that maybe that your child participates in is actually at that school because some some schools will offer swimming some schools won't offer swimming some schools will offer lacrosse some won't you know, you know so that's another thing you're going to want to research when you're considering school yeah and definitely and, and additionally to that if your family has any you know specific cultural or religious preferences explore that community make sure it has centers places of worship or any cultural institutions nearby that cater to to you yeah Absolutely. Being part of a, a supportive community that shares your values can be incredibly fulfilling. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, that's like, I mean, that's why we chose where we chose. I mean, it's it's a sense of, sense of community. I've done my research. You know, I showed up to our house and the first time we, first day we move in, uh, I get greeted with, um, uh, elderly woman, woman and her husband, and they brought us a freshly baked blueberry pie. You know, and it's like, like the movies. Yeah, like it's it's just one of those things where I mean, I wasn't expecting it, but like I knew going into where I was purchasing that sense of community was prominent. It was talked about, and it's definitely real. And I made the best decision. My wife and I made the best decision we could for our, our family. So. But when it, so then now we're gonna circle back to when it comes to affordability, consider your budget, consider your cost of living in those different neighborhoods. You wanna find a place that meets your needs without stretching your finances too thin and kind of going on top of that. One thing that we talk about with all of our clients, right, is taxes. Taxes is, you know, plays a prominent role in your payment, right? If you wanted to buy a house in X community and it was, let's just call it 1500 and then you went to Y community, same type of house, but in a different community and it goes to 1900, well, now you're stretched too thin and we know where we need to be basically. Right. So don't, don't stretch, don't stretch yourself too thin. Yeah. Just don't forget to factor in your property taxes. Also, along with property taxes, you're going to want to factor in if there's maybe a home associ homeowner association fee or any potential future development plans that may affect your property value. My personal HOA, I have an HOA, and it's uh, it's annually, so it's yearly. What does it cover? Right. I mean, mine, it's yearly, so it covers like garbage, snow, on the streets not much okay. nice. but most of the time they're going to cover you know maintenance it's going to cover snow it's going to cover even your sidewalks your water i mean like so i my my mother she lives in an hoa and hers is substantial um i think it's like 450 a month or no, maybe closer to six. And but that covers like they have amenities like a, a pool, you know, a workout facility, um, pickleball. Um, you got nature trails. You got lakes to go fishing on. Um, you have uh, they take care of your lawn. They take care of snow, um, and I think water is included in it. So you kind of it's one of those things you get what you pay for kind of in an in an association hoas don't typically come with every um every home that you purchase that's just what an hoa is in a community so let's not forget about um your family's hobbies and interests um nearby activities um or clubs that align with your passions right are there are there any of those so yeah Golf courses. Golfing, I like golfing. 
All right, so to summarize, when, when choosing a neighborhood for your family, remember, just make a list of priorities. Conduct online research. Visit the neighborhood in person. Um, consider the school district, the athletics. Look for community, community support. Uh, what else? Evaluate affordability and, you know, account for your, your hobbies and your interests. Like, you know, if you're into golfing and there's golf courses around, that's a plus. If you're into fishing, there's lakes around, that's a plus. And I would say, last but not least, um, trust your gut. Trust your instincts. Um, that's what we all need to do, in my opinion. Sometimes you can just feel when a neighborhood is the right fit for your family. Well, we hope these tips help you choose the perfect neighborhood for your family. If you have any questions or you have experiences to share, then, then please, please leave them in the comments below. Yeah. And don't forget to hit the, the subscribe button. The, there's like a ring notification bell so that you never miss any of our future, you know, buying, home buying and, and family re related content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. We are Simply Sold with Gray and Gold. Real estate made simple. Peace.